Hello guys, welcome to my channel and thanks for watching this video. Uh, some of the guys had asked uh, how we can connect our Keycloak server with our OpenLab directory and how we can have a user federation from OpenLab in Keycloak. So in this video, uh, we want to learn how we can do user federation in Keycloak. Uh, as you see, here is our Keycloak server. So if you don't know how you can install Keycloak server, you can go back to the videos in my channel and uh, watch the video and install the key cloak on your machine and here is our open lab directory um, with the use of this command we can check uh, what we have in our open lab directory and if you don't have installed open lab uh, directory on your ubuntu machine and uh, you don't know how it is so uh, you can also go back and watch the video about this topic and um, as i said in this video we want to do user federation so we go to uh, our key clock server here i have created a new role and under this role we want to do user federation and uh, as i always uh, as i always say uh, i would really appreciate any likes comments or subscribe from your side thanks a lot so for user federation we go to the uh, we go to the role and under the role we have an option here this option is user federation we click on that and after that we have to select uh, provider uh, we open the drop down here we want to do the user federation from open lab so we select a lab and we go to the uh, next window and here we have to set some settings good we go uh, the options one by uh, we go through the options one by one and um, i will tell you how you can set everything here so that the user federation uh, works for you but as a tip if you go to this uh, uh, question section so you can uh, see a quick uh, sorry a brief explanation about each and every options but we talk about everything here so the first option is enabled so um here you have two options one and uh sorry on and off uh, if you select off the uh, the users cannot be imported and the user federation uh, cannot work for you and um, the users are disabled so you have to uh, set on here the second one is console display name by default it is LDAP uh, it means that if you do the um, a federation you can see this name under the federation and I think it is a good option uh, if you just let it by default it is LDAP so you can understand that the user federation is from an LDAP directory so I let it the default as a default uh, the second one is the priority so uh, before we talk about um, the value that you have that we have to set here let's uh, explain with uh, a, a little bit about uh, key club itself so uh, if you search for a user in your key clock server the key clock server will look up the user first in its own um, database the Keycloak server has uh, by default a hard to uh, database so first looks for the user in its database and if the Keycloak server cannot find the user in its own database so tries Keycloak tries to find the user in the directory that you find uh, that you define here so uh, suppose that you have one two three uh, or more user federations and uh, with the use of this option priority you can um, force the key clock server to search first in this directory that you define here for the users and for the groups so because of this we have this priority option here and uh, in this case we have only one lab directory so it is okay if we let it as zero or we can select uh, uh, other number also here so because of this is the we have the priority option here the second uh, the next option is import users 
so it uh, if it is uh, you have here again two option on and off and you if you select off so the users will not be imported to key clock the next option is edit mode so under edit mode um, um, you can define the edit policy uh, that you have with your LLAP server. Uh, under edit mode, you have three options. The first one is read only, write table, and unsynchronized. So if you select read only, um, some of the attributes of the user from OpenLLAP, like username, first name, email, and such things, they will be unchangeable. You cannot change these attributes of the users from OpenLLAP. If you select Write Table, these attributes can be updated and will be synchronized automatically with your uh, LLAP store. It means that with the use of Keycloak, you can change the attributes of your users uh, in Keycloak. And if you select Unsynchronized, uh, user data will be imported, but uh, they will not be synchronized back to the open LLAP. So um, depending on your policy, you can select one of these options here. In this case, I don't want to change any attributes of the users from the open LLAP directory. So I just select read only. The next one is synchronized registration. You have here again two options on and off. Uh, but what does it make for us? So, um, if you want that the new users in Keycloak um, to be added to your LDAP directory, for example, you create manual here under user, a uh, user in Keycloak, and uh, you want that this, this uh, sorry, that this user be added to your LDAP directory. So, you can, in this case, you have to select on. But if you don't want it, so you can select off for this option. Um, the other one, the other option is the window. So here we select the window. In this case, uh, it is for Active Directory, Red Hat Directory Server, and we don't have the uh, LLAP directory. So we select other here. And uh, the next option is username LDAP attribute. So what does it mean and what it makes for us? Um, this is the attribute uh, that we have select as the username for our users in our directory, LDAP directory server. So if we go back to the LDAP directory, you see that here, for example, we have a user and here is the username. So as the attribute, we have select UID, user ID. So it will be username LDAP attribute for us. UID, user ID. And by default, it is user ID. So in this case, I don't change it, but if you have uh, selected something else as the username for your users, so you have to set that uh, value here. The next one is RDN LDAP attribute. So um, RDN first uh, about RDN itself. RDN uh, states for relative distinguished name of an entry in our uh, open LDAP uh, directory. Uh, as we said in the video about the installation of open LDAP directory, each entry has a distinguished name as you see here dn for example the distinguished name of this user is this options that we have here that is the distinguished name for each and every uh, entry we have a, a distinguished name but what is rdn each of these component here user id cn ou dc dc each of these components it's itself an rdn so we can say that a distinguished name is um, composed of some RDNs. And for this option in Keycloak, uh, it is um, uh, practically um, better if you select 
uh, the most left option here. In this case, it will be again user ID. As I said, if you have another option here, you have to select that. But in this case, I have user ID, so I select the user ID. So one more time, RDNs uh, are these components. Each of these components is an RDN for this entry. And for this option here, in Keycloak, we select the most left one. It will be user ID. And by default, it is also user ID. Uh, the next option that we have here is the, um, it is a server assigned uh, universally unique identifier. So uh, if you have this value set in your uh, LDAP directory, you can set it here as it is in three uh, UUID. But if you don't have it, you have to select one of these options here for your users that is more unique. For example, in this case, uh, we can say that user ID is unique because uh, each and every user can have only one user ID. So this option is a unique option for our users, but a user can have two, three, four, or more groups, or two, three, four, and more uh, organizational units. So they cannot be a good option for this case in our key cloak. So user ID is unique in this case. We change it here as user ID again. And uh, the next option is user object class. So in the installation of open lab directory, you have talked about these things. And um, we go back again. As you see here, we have for each and every entry, we have some object classes here. For example, here, object class organizational unit, object class top. And for the user, object class account, object class top. So you have to select these object classes uh, from your open lab directory and put it here. And if you have, so in this case, in this case, for me, it will be account and top. So I type account and top. I select here account and top. But if you have too many object classes, for example, and you don't want to, and we we uh, we just separate them with the use of a comma. But if you have too many you know, object classes and you don't want to type everything here you just here just uh, set an star and it means all of the object classes that you have. And uh, now we can check, test the connection here. We have the option and we can check if uh, already there is a connection between our key clock server and the open a lab directory. So I click on that and now we get uh, Oh, sorry, I just, uh, I have forgot to set the LDAP connection URL. So um, if you want, if you have already uh, installed your SSL certificates, you have to type here LDAPs. It is LDAPs is like HTTPS, but LDAP, sorry, but if you uh, don't have installed the certificates and you just want uh, uh, to have an unsecure connection between Kicklock and Open Lab. So you select LDAP. And after that, I have, as I have selected here, the name of your machine and the port of LDAP. And this is the uh, unsecure port of Open Lab 389. And this is the name of the machine uh, in which I have installed the open lab directory. So now if I uh, click on test connection, you see that we get this message here, LDAP connection is successful. It means that our key clock server is now connected with our open lab directory. Uh, now we go further and we uh, set these options here. So uh, the next option is users DN. So users DN is the, this, um, is the place that um, uh, we have our users. So for example, we go back here, you see that we have our user on this, uh, under this distinguished place. You can simply just 
make a copy paste of that so it will be the um, entry that you have the uh, your users so I select it and it will be so CN and OU and in this is the domain the our user on this group under this organizational unit and under this domain here custom uh, user allow filters if you want to set extra filter here for example if you want to uh, to select only one user from this group you can set it here for example like this it is not our tema right now but it will be something like this user id your user for example and close parentheses and close tag quotation so if you do something like this so only this user will be uh, uh, will come from in the open lab directory into key club but we want all of our users so I just uh, let it free let it empty here and as I said it is for custom and extra lab filters the next option is the search scope so under search, search scope we have two options here one level and subtree the differences between these two is if you select one level the search applies only for the users in the specified dns and if you select subtree the search applies to the whole of the subtree so i just i want i select the first one because i just want that uh, the search happens under the dn that i have defined here and the next option is the bint dn and here we have also two options the first one is none and the second one is simple so none uh, is the anonymous lab authentication and the second one simple is with the credentials with the bint credentials and bint password so we select simple because we have administrator we have password so we select this option and the uh, second one is bind dn so here you have to put the dn of your lab administrator so we go back to our lab and here i scroll up we have our administrator lab administrator here as you see description lab administrator so we select this dn here it will be the dn of our lab administrator I can just make a copy paste i've selected and here you give the password of this administrator i mean the password of the uh, administrator of your open a lab directory so now we can test the authentication i click on that and you see here lab authentication successful and now we scroll down and we can save our uh, the um user federation after that we save it we have we get uh, some options here synchronize change users synchronize all users remove imported users and unlike and link users so we first we want just to synchronize all of the users from uh, our open lab directory into kiko so i click on this option here and here you see that synchronize is successful one important users and now import and no user is updated and it's okay because uh, it is the first time and as you see here we have uh, only one user here and this user and this user comes to our um, uh, key cloud server so we can check it after that we go to the users here we click on that and you see that now we have the user here and this is exactly the user to that we have here in our open lab directory so it means that the uh, the user federation works for us from open lab into uh, key cloud the next steps is maybe that you want to set some roles for your users and things like that but it is um, for our review and um, we have done it thanks for watching